they do. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a, a question in the audience. If you could go ahead, please. All right. Uh, my question goes back to Dick and a couple of comments that he made that we have to go this through the traditional and, and legal ramifications despite the fact that our opposition, if you would, is doing the exact opposite. They are ignoring the Constitution, they're ignoring us, and they will continue to do so. Um, is this really a situation where we can change this through ballot boxes that are known to be corrupt? Dick, one, uh, Dick wow. or Ken, either one. Please take that question. Ken, you want to take Boy, that you know, let me, this, is, this is Ken, yeah. Let me, I, I would like to pass this off to, uh, to General Vallely. He's done some significant work on the notion of, of uh, forcing people to, to uh, uh, leave government. General, would you, would you uh, talk about that? Ken, Ken I'd be happy to, and thank you for the question uh, regarding what we can do. And uh, Dick and Ken have described, uh, you know, going the grassroots political route, which we have to do. Uh, to prepare ourselves for 2014 and 2016. But our government is so broken now that each day we go down over the, over the cliff even more and more. Uh, the lack of uh, strong leadership, uh, not only uh, in the executive branch, but a lack of really strong leadership uh, in Congress, uh, both in the Democrats uh, and the Republicans. Uh, I'm not even sure that our traditional process is going to straighten our government out in sufficient time to save us. So that leads us to what options we have. And if you look under the Constitution, we have impeachment. Now, we know with the partisan politics that that's not going to happen. So we've got Obama for another three years. I'm not confident it would happen. You also uh, have uh, the idea that uh, uh, that individuals can resign. Now, that's not within the Constitution, but certainly if you look at Nixon, uh, if we have demand resignations, and I would use the Egyptian model where they had 33 million Egyptians stand up to oust Morsi and, and the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, we need millions to stand up in our state capitals and, and in Washington, D.C., and we need to have that done within the next 12 months. Because I can tell you, my forecast, things are going to get far worse than better, especially with Obamacare uh, and the other things that are happening, happening to degrade uh, the effectiveness of our federal government. Our government is so broken now that they can't even help themselves. So what do we do as people? Let it go on and go through the normal election process and hope it will get better? Hope is not a strategy, by the way. Uh, or do we go under the latest writings that we've just put out in the last 48 hours that, in fact, we need something as a no-confidence vote, as in the parliamentarian system, that the Constitution doesn't quite cover. But certainly there ought to be legislative action that can be taken if we had anybody in Congress that has the courage to stand up and say, let's legislate a no-confidence vote in the executive branch and leading our government further uh, over the next year, second year, and third year until 2016. So uh, what we're doing now is, is giving alternatives out there and options to the American people to stand up, require a no-confidence vote. And I would even legislate to get a national recall going. And uh, I think it takes a lot of pressure. The people then begin to act and stand up and do things. So what we're offering here is alternatives to other things that are not included, uh, like impeachment, uh, in the Constitution. So I think these are things we need to talk about, discuss, to get off our derrieres. If we've got to march to the state capitals, we've got to march in Washington with 100 million people, then that's what we need to do. And I would say if we can make citizens arrest, and I've challenged our government and people that if we have people that are conducting treason against the United States in the best interests of our country, violating the Constitution, violating our laws, just as they're doing with these excessive executive orders that are coming out of the White House, 
where you have a president and his team that doesn't care about the Constitution. They will do anything they can to win. And I think this was pointed out just a few minutes ago. Uh, they will do anything. They will go for the throat. Yes. And that's what we have to do because we're in battle to save the United States. So we have options out there, and we have to pursue all of those options to take the country back. So I'll rest, uh, I'll rest my case on that. There you go. Thank you. And, you know, just to interject there, we need to bring great pressure. I think the Egyptian model, I mean, my God, look what they did with Facebook. They brought great pressure and caused that government to change. Now they call, Then they caused it to change back when they saw what they had. It was incredible exactly. what we saw. It was incredible. It was a masterpiece. Yes, it was. And I, and I said back then, these guys are showing us the blueprint. Really, but... Well, uh, that's what we need is a, blue, yeah. a blueprint for victory in the battle for America. Yes, that should be our theme Yes, call. sir. I'm going to go to real quick to an online call. They've been waiting for a long time. We're going to do one. Uh, uh, let's see uh, who this, this is. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, uh, your number is one 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 one. I don't know what that is. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You got a question for the gentleman? Uh, the generals. And... Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, I know a number of the gentlemen that have been speaking. Uh, this is Blaze. Hey, Blaze. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> Wonderful job you're doing, and uh, you have my full support. My I, my my question, and, and maybe this is to General Valley because I, I I sense the same kind of thing. Timing is so much of the essence. I think many many citizens feel: Do we have until 2014 to hopefully make a political change, or will the government, you know? Will something be created uh, to cause that not to happen? And uh, that's a lot of the concerns that I hear from people I talk to. I don't know if anybody can address that. Anybody want to try and address that one? Yeah, let me address that one real quick. Uh, uh, Our special operations speaks uh, group uh, knows uh, Charles Woods very well. He was the uh, father of Ty Woods, and uh, we had him with us in Washington, and I helped prep him for the congressional hearings. Uh, But Charles, uh, that morning when I was talking to him, who had lost his son in Benghazi, he said, Paul, things seem to be so broken uh, that it may require only divine intervention. And so... I'm looking out there at the options. We definitely need divine intervention, but we also have to be masters uh, of our destiny and captains of our soul. That means that we have to do things to move forward, and hopefully divine intervention will lead us the right way. Thank you, Blaze, and thank you, General. Uh, We have a question on the floor. Please uh, state your question. Go ahead. Uh, This will be there to... uh, the general or to anyone there, uh, as I have done some studying, real after World War II, there was a mayor election in a little town in southern Kentucky. And the operation that they used to correct it got a lot of attention and has been suppressed since then. You think we could use it once again? <laughs> I'll let Larry Kenner... Uh... <laughs> or did it, take that one if you'd like. Can I get some clarification? This is Ken. Can I get some clarification on that? Are you talking about the Tennessee event out there? Uh, oh, pardon me, yes, it is a Tennessee a, event. I, I said Kentucky, pardon yeah. me. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah. That was Athens, um, Athens, Tennessee. Athens, Tennessee. Athens, Tennessee. Athens, Tennessee. That's Tennessee. correct. Yes. Yeah. I know, I know okay. the whole town well. Go ahead, Kenneth. Um, You've got the floor. Yeah, I sort of stepped on this one, didn't I? <laughs> uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, we are, we each and every one of us are our own first responders, okay? And people like to say that the uh, that the local police department and the fire department and whatnot are, are the first responders, but they're our backup. So 
we have to take the lead. We know we're right. We know what our rights are. And when a totalitarian government takes, takes hold and begins to uh, aggress against its citizens, then we've got to do what we've got to do. Okay. Um, I, would, I would advise, I would urge everyone to, to be armed, to be trained, and to have a basic plan for protecting themselves, their families, and their communities. You can't do much more than that. Yeah. More eloquent people than myself are going to have to convince um, the American people as General Valley uh, uh, pointed out, to rally to the state capitals and into the, to Washington, D.C., and make a show of force sufficient to have these people, these tyrants, step down from office or be forced out of office. We don't have much choice in the matter as, as the way things are developing. So I'll leave it at that. There okay. you go. I hope I answered the question. Uh, uh.